All right, everybody, this is Ross. Um, in today's video, we are taking down the low tunnels. I made an executive decision. It's just too warm out here. It's uh, May 27th, and this is the day that we're taking them down this year of 2020. So um, I wanna show you guys in this, in this particular video how easy it is to take these down, um, how quick it is which then is going to translate well over to the just the flexibility of this entire technique you know it just really drives home the point i think of how um, not permanent these particular structures are and really what the main focus is and the purpose is to get these low tunnels up early in the season um, you know to then get these fruits and these figs off to a really good head start. Um, and then that's it. You know, that's really the main function and purpose of these low tunnels was to just get them looking way better than they would have if this plastic was not here. And we have done videos now showing some preliminary results at about a month in. Um, now, we are gonna show you guys, I think, some more results as we progress through the season. We're now at day, around day 40 or day 45-ish, somewhere around there. Um, and really, the, the results haven't changed too much. It's just becoming very obvious to me with the weather and looking at these trees, they're really starting to take off and I don't necessarily need the plastic. Um, now, in a normal year, um, these trees, would have had the plastic over top of them for 90 days. So it's not 45 days, it's actually double the amount of time. So for half the amount of time here, sort of as this year's experiment, um, I think they've done phenomenally well. I've done a little bit of pinching, a little bit of thinning on some of these trees here that are more mature. And I'm seeing some pretty decent fruit set. I am seeing some uh, hormonal imbalance because we cut them back so, so low. So we'll have to evaluate that in a later video. Um, but what we just did to take this down, by the way, is I took off the bricks and the rocks. I had different things weighing down the ends. If you weigh down the ends with some really heavy stuff, it really helps. And I've also lined the sides with some bricks that I'll, uh, I'll, I'll weigh that down a bit earlier in the season. And then as it gets a bit warmer, it's not really all that necessary. It does help with wind weighing down the, the sides of the plastic, but this paracord is really the key, this blue line here. And what I'm gonna do is actually come in here at the bottom and I'm gonna take off this paracord. That's the next step. As soon as you get the ends, the ends weighed down or not weighed down, you take off this paracord by undoing the slip knot here at the bottom. Um, there's a there's a bolt that goes into the PVC and you undo that and then now this plastic is free and we're gonna be able to slide this thing off in just a minute I'm telling you this this technique of building them and I guess the the whole entire structure the the different ways that you can build these things I think this is one of the better ways to do it just because of how flexible this really is. I mean, this really drives home, I think, the point. I'm struggling here to get this one off, I think because of my gloves, but we got it off. That, parafor that paracord's coming off, and then the last step, it's really simple, we just take this off. That's really all this is. It's, um, it's attached here to one of these there we go. But, you know, just think about how easy this is to take down. It's not as easy to put it up, but it's pretty darn close uh, to the simplicity that this is. It really is quite something. I mean, this took me, <laughs> what, how long did this take me? Uh, it's attached over here to one of these spring clamps that I have. The spring clamps on the ends really do help as well. I recommend those. Uh, that came in a bit later in the construction process. 
But once I got them on, I never looked back. Um, so yeah, this is the plastic. I need to get an you know, easier way to get this stuff out of here, I guess. But I'll put this aside, I'll fold it up, I'll mark it. Um, and then that way it's away for good. I know where it goes when I put them back up in the fall because our plan is to cut these trees back. You know, a lot of these are gonna be, some of them are gonna be at the top of this, this roof here. Um, these other younger trees might only be up to my waist or maybe six feet high. Uh, but the plan every year is to cut them back to six to 12 inches. So what I'll do is once I cut them back, then I'll throw the plastic back over top. And I can even make this easier. I could leave these hoops up if I really want. But if I wanted to take the hoops down, you just pull them up out of the ground. I mean, that's rebar that's keeping them in there. You separate it from the rebar and that's it. I mean, this whole thing takes two seconds <laughs> to take down. It's, it really is nuts. So now it almost seems like nothing was here to begin with. Um, and it's nice because now, you know, these trees are not really that big of an eyesore anymore. Or these, uh, these low tunnels are not that big of an eyesore. And, you know, you have the flexibility if you want to not have to ventilate these things all summer, right? Because a, a high tunnel, as an example, or a big greenhouse is gonna be there permanently. And yeah, you can roll up the sides on those, but it's kind of a pain, isn't it? Have to go out there every day and roll up the sides and make sure that you have some ventilation, maybe even some air conditioning. Um, you know, there are some benefits to that, having a big greenhouse like that, but I'm telling you, uh, having these low tunnels is like, it's a breeze, it's a joke. The amount of flexibility is crazy. Yeah, I wanna thank you guys here for watching this one. I hope some people are inspired to do something like this. Um, and I think that's all I wanted to cover. Yeah, we, we took off the tunnels. That took really no time at all. Just a little recap here. We talked about why I'm taking them off. It is May 27th, as I mentioned. It's quite warm. You know, here in Philadelphia, I didn't say this, I don't think, but you know, it goes from winter time to summer very quickly. There's not a whole lot of spring and not a whole lot of fall. So it gets very cold quickly and it gets very warm quickly. So around June, June 1st, it feels like summer out here. And it may not feel like that where you guys are at, but I'll tell you, uh, it comes quick and it comes out of nowhere. So yeah, that's, that's sort of it. it we'll, we'll keep you guys updated on this, on this progress, how everything's going, the garden's coming in, the tomatoes are coming in. I mean, everything's kinda just doing so well with all this heat, so. We'll see everybody soon, all right? If you guys enjoyed this one, please hit the subscribe button and check out our blog figboss.com. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.